I'm not sure if you've played this one, Atma, but Corey, if you want to get the last topic of uh, Pokemon Snap. Sure. Um, I have not played it, so. Where, where, oh, where, snap. Are, we, where are we at? <laughs> I love your facial reactions every time I do a stupid joke. <laughs> <laughs> um, I live for that. That's my aesthetic. <laughs> What what wait? What about Pokemon Snap? Uh, you played Pokemon Snap. No one else has. Like, tell us. Oh, what, oh what yeah, is, yeah. What is Pokemon Snap? Um, How did you enjoy it? So I haven't beaten it yet, but I recently on stream I I unlocked like three new locations that I didn't have previously, and I haven't actually gone to any of them. But I was super excited when I unlocked the actual like beach level because in the original Pokemon Snap you start on a beach level. And it's just, it's just super adorable. Like literally the game is just adorable. It's just so cute and so fun. And like, um, I actually enjoy, like I have never played a game that had, that literally had photo mode. Like there's so many games now that have photo mode and it encourages you to like edit them and upload them to your social media and blah, blah, blah. I haven't wanted to do that with anything else except for Pokemon Snap. And they have like an in-game interface, like online in-game interface with that you just upload it to the Pokemon Snap, like the po- the Pokemon Snap like in-game web page or whatever. And people can literally rate your rate your uh, your photos, like give your photos like cheers or whatever. And it's like super simple, but but it's like adorable because you can put stickers and stuff on it and put frames around it and just add all these different wacky things to it. And uh, I already uploaded like two customized photos of like a a, a, a do trio and um and then also like these i can't remember what they're called but they're these like little like pom-pom looking pokemon that were like they're kind of like going in a row and they're walking along the ground or something and i i decorate them to ha- have all little bow ties and little umbrellas <laughs> and it was adorable um so yeah i'm having a fun time with it like it's it's a nice chill game uh between horror games on my stream to play so like basically the way i format my stream is when we always have a horror game we're playing and we always have a cute game we're playing because my whole tagline is welcome to my kingdom we have the cuties and the spookies here um it's a good palate cleanser that's for sure yeah so and it's also good for palate cleansing um so literally i have like I'm playing Cozy Cove or Cozy Grove right now on my Switch as well as Pokemon Snap. And I'll like alternate between those. So Cozy Grove is a horror game? Cozy Grove is not a horror game. (laughs) (laughs) When it comes to cute games, I'll alternate between those. Um, Currently, my horror game I'm playing is Alien Isolation. So Big spookies. But yeah, Pokemon Snap. If you like the nostalgia, if you like discovering new Pokemon whether you call them GMOs or not, my boyfriend calls them GMOs. Uh, you'll enjoy this one. You'll enjoy it. How, so. how freaked out would you be in real life if you like accidentally stepped on a rock and then just like fists exploded out of it and wanted to square up with you? <laughs> I'm not kidding. I would. I would. I would squeak. <laughs> I would. I would. I would run because that's not natural. Not I, in I this love, world. <laughs> I love how Geodude's name is literally Rock Dude. A yeah. Dude of rock. <laughs> dude of rock. He's he's, um, the, he's the rock dude. What, one thing I heard people talking about with this <laughs> new one in, in particular was that uh, you can't unlock like new levels and stuff. And you, like, you kind of have to do repeat runs of the same levels back to back in order to unlock yeah. new stuff. What, did it you is, like that? Was it annoying or? It's not. Okay. So like it is a little bit grindy, but it's not like as long as you're like actually trying with each run, then then uh you can get through like you can discover new places at a at a decent pace um the game the game does take a bit to get you introduced to all of the elements of it um but i think i actually kind of like that of it because it actually teaches you to be patient and just enjoy what you have now and not just like go 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 and trying to beat the game as fast as possible because it is a game literally meant to be about leisurely going through these areas of pokemon and capturing the perfect picture like it's not meant to be a speed game you know so 
I, I think that critique is a little is a little harsh. I, mean, I, I can see why I can see why people are like, oh, it's too grindy. But I, I think it has the perfect amount of grind, if that makes sense. Uh, question like, about the, uh, the the picture submissions, because if I remember correctly from the first game, uh, you can only submit like a, a specific amount to like get graded to get points and whatnot. That kind of dictates if you if you move to other levels. Is it that same thing where you have to like select a, a select few out of all the pictures you take? So, yeah. So when you take pictures, it actually rates it based on like the positioning of your Pokemon, how many Pokemon are in the photo, the scenery, uh, what they're doing in the photo. Um, all, all that stuff is taken into account and um, it, it, it rates numerically. Uh, it, it, it tallies up points and then based on your points, it'll reward you uh, one through four stars. And then those stars are also have their own levels of uh, bronze, silver, gold, and diamond. Um, so, and then before you even submit the photos, it actually tells you how many number stars you're going to get from that photo that you're about to submit. But it doesn't tell you like what kind of stars. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, and then it encourages you to keep going back and getting uh, different photos of that same Pokemon to fill up your album of like, so say you get, you get, say you get a picture of Pikachu and it's a one star picture, but there's still three other slots for a two star, three star and a four star picture. So it encourages you to go through and fill up the album for those four slots for each, po for each Pokemon, basically. I, I will say one complaint I had about that original uh, pr probably more so after, you know, uh, you and I did film school is that in that original Professor Oak, I don't think he's a good photographer. He's just like, I want all the Pokemon <laughs> front and center. I want the body. I'm just like, no, dude, you got to do like the rule of thirds. Got to get your composition going. You got to have some nice headshots. He's like, no, fuck it. I just want it middle of this. <laughs> well, no. And now they have now they have Todd all grown up uh, from the from the original series. Uh in the game and so there's a lot of there's a lot more uh elements of photography involved in in this game than there was in the past and then also there's like lumina orbs that make uh pokemon do like uh actions that they normally wouldn't or they glow which is which is cool uh and also there's like a scanning ability because you basically have a high tech like communicator camera um that you can scan things and it literally like it, it, it sometimes it'll cause Pokemon to do different actions too. And it's this whole thing. It, and then of course you can throw fruit at the Pokemon because what's Pokemon was, snap <laughs> without throwing fruit, you know? So I, I was about to ask like, yeah, can you still just eat fruit or like in a Pokemon's head or cause you even had a, what were they called in the first one? Pester balls, just like little gas balls that like make Pokemon sick and to make yeah. them do stuff. Uh, they make it a point to state that the, Fruits you're throwing at them are soft and light, <laughs> <laughs> so that no Pokemon were hurt or harmed in the making of this game. Yeah, and that original, uh, like if I remember correctly, that sound effect was like a hard thunk. Yeah, <laughs> hey Squirtle, just <laughs> fucking smash him right in the head. <laughs> uh, so uh, let's see. Are, are there any are there any last topics either? If you want to go over. Anything we might have um, missed or whatnot? Oh, uh, real quick, just re real quick uh, segue back to my previous topic from like hours ago. Um, so just coincidentally, the Silent Hill merch is being released the day after the abandoned thing. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> and the Twitter page literally says uh, releasing of new merch to, in order to celebrate dot 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 so that's my news <laughs> <laughs> how about you Atma? anything you want to shout out or anything um trying to think i uh oh i mean um i guess i've been playing griftlands uh on my switch uh, it just came out like a week or two ago. I think it's been in early access for almost two years now uh, and finally got its 1.0 release. So I immediately grabbed it because I don't do early access. Um, and it, it's basically Slay the Spire 
uh, if you add actual narrative elements to it. Um, lots of it's deck building roguelike. Uh, I found it a little easier. Um, but I also don't know if that's just because I've played like 300 hours of Slate of the Spire or not. Holy shit. <laughs> oh my God. Oh, wow. Yeah. So like, it's a good I, game. <laughs> yeah. Slate of the Spire is fantastic. Uh, mm -hmm. Grifflands, like, there's three characters, and I've already beaten the first two story campaigns. And I don't, I haven't really looked into whether that's like, supposed to happen and then like the challenges like on like the harder difficulties or like repeat playthroughs or what um but the narrative is actually pretty interesting i really like the world building um so if anyone is interested in deck building games or roguelikes where there is like a a decent narrative attached to it uh there's cool choices you have to make uh different factions and and things like that and you can make enemies and make friends and you get bonuses and detriments to your uh, each battle based on who you've pissed off most recently and who, who likes you. Um, so yeah, that's, that's been like my switch game while I've been playing ratchet and clank uh, on, on the big screen. Nice. I might have to check nice. that out. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, yeah, it's basically going to do it for the show that covered a lot of Nintendo stuff. Well, I guess the majority of it was Nintendo stuff. The Final Fantasy and Ratchet and close out more Nintendo stuff with Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, thanks for hanging out, everyone. Um, the next scheduled stream should be tomorrow, 5 p.m. PST. Going to be more Bloodborne. I can't promise I'll beat any more bosses on the first time around. Uh, it'll probably be a very sad, depressing episode where I cry a lot. Uh, but yes, <laughs> thanks, everyone, for hanging out in chats. Um, and thank you, Corey and Atma, for being on the show. It's, I yeah. love having the both of you on. Yeah, it's been fun. Yeah, I'm <laughs> glad to be here. Uh, play Danganronpa. Play Danganronpa V3. Danganronpa 3 is very different from V3. That is a movie. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's going to do the show. And I'll see everyone next time. Bye. Bye. -bye.